Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we're going to do a should you pull on Locke and Strago. So these guys should be dropping, I believe, on the evening of the 19th. So it's a couple of days after the day I'm recording this video. Although this is going to go up a day later, so it'll be about a day away by the time you guys are seeing this. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the banners for Locke and Strago, talk about their kits, talk about if there's anything worth on these banners... Um, in terms of calls or spheres, right? So we'll start with kind of the calls and the spheres right away. Um, over here, I mean, Agrius and Rude, they're kind of like Brave Gain or Max Brave spheres. Like, they're okay, but nothing like too crazy there. I would say um, Rude's call is kind of notable because it is a double healing call. And just like having healing calls is nice. I wouldn't like go crazy and like chase it or anything. But like, if you get Rude's LD, I think his call is solid, right? Um, Agris, she has a little bit of healing on her call, but her call isn't like too insane. Um, Locke's call, nothing really there. Um, he has an okay sphere. Like I think it's, uh, it's an attack up sphere, but it's a sneak one. So it's like only when you're not targeted. I'm not a big fan of those because anytime bosses do all attacks, you're being targeted. So even if you have like a tank that's locking the enemies away from you, the bosses at some point are going to be doing AOE and then you're not triggering that. So I'm actually not a fan of, um, lock sphere. Um, and then going to this side. Um, Waka has a very good sphere, so I would definitely hold on to those. Um, it's technically, I would say, one of the better D spheres in the game in terms of that it gives party attack and max brave. His is just a little trickier to trigger because the person that has the sphere needs to have five buffs on them. Um, as long as you're using a character, though, that self-sustains five buffs or you know you're running party comps where you're always going to have five buffs on your character, um, then Waka's is a very good sphere, so you might want to hold on to those for sure. Um... Strago's got a solid sphere, but nothing you like you need to like worry about chasing, right? Um, Edge's sphere, I think it's like an evade and then you brave gain on evade. Um, I think there's some niche use for that, but um, nothing you need to chase, right? Um, so with that, let's talk about the actual like should you pull, like about the characters in general, right? Um, Rude and Agrius being LD only, they're going to be a little tougher to use. I do like, I like their kits. They've had periods where they're very good. Rude basically is just like a brave gain healing specialist, right? So if you're desperate for a support character, you could run Rude, but his damage is going to be super weak and you're not going to have Echo or Force Charging, which are things you really want out of a support character. So I'd say Rude is just someone, if you're desperate for like a budget support, sure. Um, Agrius is nice. She's got some brave gain. She has a really cool silence effect. She has a paralyze. Like Agrius does some nice things like... These are both characters that, like, you could maybe make some use out of as an LD-only character, but they're not, like, super viable. They're not characters you're really going to want to chase, right? So they're just kind of there, right? Then we're going to talk about Locke. Now, Locke, I'll just say in general, I'm, I'm a Final Fantasy VI mega fan. Those of you that have watched me for a while know this. Locke is one of my all-time favorite Final Fantasy characters, so I like him. Now, what I will say about Locke in this game and, like, his, his where he is right now um, I think Locke is a character who does a lot. Like, he does a lot of different things. I would say he's not the best at any of the things he does. He's kind of a jack-of-all-trades type of character. One thing I will say about Locke is he... I would say he's one of the more complicated characters in terms of how to play him. And I would suggest, really, you can watch the character guide I already have on him. I will redo his guide after he gets the stuff. Because um, I'm going to have him maxed out. Because my Locke is already green BT blue armor. So I just got to get his FR. So we will show off a really maxed out Locke. The way he works, so he's got a lot of things, right? He can do instant turns. Um, he has this gimmick where, like, he steals stuff off the enemies. And then based on what you steal, it changes your HP attack. And you, basically, the way you play him is you want to steal a Genji Glove and you want to steal a Master Scroll. You get this very powerful Genji Master Scroll attack, which does, I believe now, it's going to be, like, 15 dumps. Like, it's very powerful. Um, but it's always, like, hard to get it off consistently um, because you have to like get those two items back again before you can do it again. I think with his rework, they make it easier to consistently get that, which is nice. Um, but it's still not like the craziest thing. He also has like healing in his kit, right? So he just, he does like all these like little things. He's got instant turn attacks, um, just like really interesting gimmicks, right? So I, I like him. He's very thematic, fits the thief and all that very well. When you get that powered up HP attack, it is very powerful, right? Like 18 or like 15 dumps. It's a lot of damage. Um, but, like, should you pull for Locke, right? I would say he's a character that, you know, like, there's, like, in terms of damage, there's characters that do that better than him. In terms of his, like, healing and, like, supporty type things, there are characters that do these things better than them. Um, and then, once again, he's a little bit trickier to play. Like, you really have to think about what you're doing with him. The one thing I'm going to say I do really like about Locke, 
His force condition is actually very interesting to me. Um, it's like you get 20% for melee damage, but then you get 60% for just having a special buff, which is basically a overhead, which a lot of characters have, including Wink Wink Aerith, <laughs> which means, and it's 60%, like just for having a special buff. So that tells me Aerith is going to be able to echo for 140. So this is yet another character that Aerith can abuse with insane echo mechanics. So I do like that part of the FR. But I'm going to be honest, for like the average player, I would probably skip Locke. Um, I, I don't think he's a, he's not like a huge meta-defining character, not a character that everybody needs, right? But I think he's definitely going to be one of the more fun and interesting characters to play. If you like characters that aren't mindless, like characters that you really got to think about buttons you're pressing, he's a good character for you. If you're someone that likes more simple, straightforward characters, you may want to steer clear of Locke. I do think there's a little bit of complexity. Once again, I'll break it down for you when I do the guide. You can watch my old guide on him because like those basic parts of the kit are still there. Um, he's just getting some upgrades to kind of make it a little bit better, a little bit more consistent. So we'll talk about that when that guy comes. Um, next up, we have Strago. Um, now, what we'll say here is Edge is like the goat. <laughs> Edge is one of the best LD only characters you could actually get. I've talked about him a lot. I feel like I've talked about him like almost recently enough that it's possible maybe he won't actually be here, but we'll see. They've been really weird about these LD only banner characters. Like a couple of banners ago, they just put BT characters on there. Um, you know, so who knows? This could change. So that's a disclaimer. Like it's not guaranteed to look exactly like this. But I would say Edge and Party is actually like a nice character. Um, especially if you're running like Kelger, you could pair them up. Um, they're both evade tanks, right? And then they're, they're both going to counter. Um, the only thing with them is they're going to like fight for wanting to dodge because they're both like lock type characters, right? So if you're fighting a boss that's doing a lot of all attacks and they both can dodge on all the attacks, it's going to be a really interesting thing because they both do counters and Edge kind of has like a buildup counter that gets stronger every time he counters. I really like him. I think Edge is fantastic. And Edge has a very unique thing with his EX where he gives party-wide evade, like oh, the whole party dodges. He's awesome. So he's like, I think for LD only characters, like he's up there with like Selfie is like, Selfie and Gladio and Edge, like to me, they're the upper echelon of LD only characters. So he is kind of a character that like, if you don't have him, I, he probably is worth ticketing his kit because like, he's just a great budget character to have, right? Waka in the party, not a big fan. He... He does support type things that he's got RNG like buffs and stuff like that um, and debuffs just like, yeah, he's just a weird odd character to play. Maybe down the road he'll be really good, but I think the best thing about Waka to be honest is a sphere, um, but he's not really worth chasing or like using in the party. Then we have Strago. Um, Strago is yet another uh, DPS character. Uh, so they've been giving us a lot of these uh, lately. He is a non-elemental magic damage uh dps character he does have a unique he has a couple attacks that do instant break so his ld will instant break um and he gets like a free turn after it so you could like kind of spam that a little bit and then he gets uh he has something called brave to death which basically as long as the enemies have an even number of brave it will instant break him so instant break is kind of like one of his gimmicks but the big thing is it's all about putting up his buff called soul of tamasa and with soul of tamasa up it makes all of his attacks trigger twice now, what's going to happen is, is if you're going to go for Strago, you're going to want to full invest and get the BT. The BT is going to be super important to his kit because what it is, is the BT makes it so Sola Tomasa lets the follow-ups trigger twice instead of once. So essentially, the way you think about it is Strago base kit with Sola Tomasa up, every attack is happening twice. And this includes his LD, his EX, like anything he does is triggering twice, okay? You have his BT effect up, now everything's triggering three times. And what you're going to know, I think Strago is going to be an AOE killer. Like, because all, all of his attacks are like big AOE shots. They're four HP dumps, which doesn't seem crazy. But when you're doing that times three, his whole kit now becomes 12, like AOE, 12 HP dumps. Like the damage is going to be wild. The thing with Strago, I'm going to say, and they have made it so like you can really consistently keep Sola Tomasa up. Like you pretty much will have it up the whole fight, right? The, I would say like the big weakness of Strago is that's basically his kit. It's just all the damage, right? Um, you know, his BT is going to have like standard buffs, kind of like Anna Crow, um, but he's more of an AOE specialist. I think in a three target fight, he's going to look ridiculous. Like he is a damage test worthy character. The problem is I'm not planning to get and max out his BT and that's going to be um, like super integral to like seeing his damage. Um, but I think he's going to be able to put up a really, like you go into that Bahamut fight with three enemies 
Uh, I think he's going to put up some really nasty damage in there. But he, and he's the thing with him, like you guys know that I, I'm not a big fan of the twins because like they have to be AOE to like be good, right? He's kind of Strago's kind of in between where like I think the more enemies there are, there are the more I like playing Strago. But Strago's not like a dead character in a single target fight. It's just you're going to get a lot less damage out of him because you want like all that AOE damage. Um, I would say Strago for the average player is probably a skip, right? Like he's going to be a cool, fun character. But yeah, he's just damaged. Now, if his crystal color is up your alley and that's something you're working on, that could be a reason to go for him. But I would say if you've got Astos, you've got Enacro, like you've got Aranea, Sephiroth, Cloud, like there's so many damage dealers out there. We always talk about this. Damage dealers are kind of a dime a dozen, right? And instant break, like it's cool, but it's not something you're going to need a ton. And instant break really loses its luster with characters like Queena and Setzer rolling around, right? Because the big the big thing, like back when Strago was like kind of more top tier, I remember him and Bartz, they were so good because they both have instant break. And they would be these bosses that put up these auras that's like you only do one brave damage. But if you can break them, then it kind of breaks their whole mode and you can start attacking them. And like you just needed stuff like that. It was so good. In today's game, it's like I'll just throw up rainbow numbers or I'll just HP damage over it. I'll just brave gain over it, right? Like big FR, go unga bunga damage. It's not as important as it once was. Now, I'm sure they're going to try to emphasize it in the fight, right? But... I don't think it's necessary. So I would also say Strago's a skip for most players. So if he's a fan favorite and you like the idea of having the big AOE damage, sure, you could go for him. But I think both of these banners are kind of skipped. Honestly, between the two, I do like Locke better because he's got more utility. The thing I forgot to mention about Locke, his BT effect is actually super awesome. His BT effect gives the entire party defense ignore, um, which once again, that's another thing that's kind of lost its luster, but there are times that it does come in handy still. But then it also makes it so that um, he's got like this Phoenix theme where he heals, right? So his BT makes it so if your party's HP falls below 50%, it'll just auto heal you. And it's not like Eris where like the BT goes away, like it heals you and you keep it, right? It's just a turn duration BT. So like I said, Locke's got like a lot more like utility to his kit. So if I were to choose between the two, I actually like Locke a little bit better. Might be my bias, but they're both FF6, right? I love FF6. But I'd say overall, both banners are probably skippable. Um, I would say once again, to summarize edge, fantastic. Like one of the best banner characters you could go for Strago insane AOE damage. If you want that, but not really a lot else other than instant break lock, a ton of utility, little more complex to play hard to consistently get his big HP plus attack. But once again, I think the FR helps with that. So we'll talk about that when you do like, I think his upgrades do make it a little bit more consistent. So I do want to look at him when I do his character guide, I think it's gonna be very fun, but I don't think either of these are a must have and keep in mind guys we're really close to community stream and I'm expecting a really big announcement so if your resources are not fantastic you really need to sit on this banner um, and wait for the community stream which is literally dropping I think the day after this banner maybe two days after this banner um, it's going to be like the Thursday whatever the Thursday is I'm thinking the 21st I think it's Thursday the 21st so wait for that. If you're even remotely on the fence, I would say only pull if you're like 100% positive you want these characters. But wait for community stream. I think there's going to be a huge announcement. Um, I would not be surprised if they announced the game merger at this point. I feel like we've been moving way too fast for that not to be happening. I think, I think there could be something where they're going to talk about us merging with JP very soon. I feel like that's kind of what's coming, but we'll see. You guys let me know what you think the community stream is going to be. Let me know if you guys are going to pull or not. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.